Gender roles among the Vikings have continued to stand out against other cultures. More specifically, the lives of women in the Viking culture reserved the power to demand respect and live a life of freedom in contrast to others in that era. Viking women exercised the ability to have a wide variety of occupations and even own land in the event that her husband or father died. Although there was a possibility of power and freedom for a woman in the Viking age, they were also expected to obey a dominant male, usually her father, brother, or husband. This documentary features the various aspects of an average Viking woman's life, including everyday appearance, occupations they could possess, and the process of becoming a bride. Mother Teutitur, Maitre Rivia, var skeig skapet, skjör var fyrir enni, skirtur strunga, skokkar var ar gólu. Sattur kona, sveigði rokk, breyði fadum, bjól til valdur. Sveigur var ar hotli, smokkur var ar bringo, dukur var ar halsi, verger al öxlum. Avi og gama alta hus. No matter what class or marriage status Viking women belonged to, the garb they wore was very similar. Each woman wore an underdress and an apron dress over it. Typically, the underdress was plain, but the apron usually had patterns on it. On their feet, the women wore knitted stockings and short boots. Women also wore necklaces, pairs of brooches, and fabric belts. During winter, women wore cloaks, mittens, and hoods to keep warm. Viking women had two types of hoods to wear. They either wore the Jorik or the Dublin hood. The Jorik was the most commonly used because it had a strap that tied under the chin. Not only did the women wear hoods and head covers in order to keep themselves warm outside, but they were also worn as a decorative costume or to indicate the wedding status of the young woman. Before marriage, women wear their hair down and loose. The last day that a woman is able to wear their hair down is the day of their wedding. After their wedding day, Viking women either braid or tie their hair back in order to symbolize their marriage status. Unlike modern day weddings, Viking weddings were, were business transactions meant to unite two families and to fuse the bloodlines. Love was insignificant to the process. Making the transition from unwed maiden to married woman was considered a rite of passage for, for Viking women. Early in the week, a traditional Viking wedding celebration lasted for about seven days. The ceremony was held on a Friday in honor of the goddess Frigga. It was also customary to hold the ceremony during the harvest or early winter to ensure enough food and supplies as well as safe travels for guests. The bride's appearance for the ceremony did not differ dramatically from her day-to-day -day appearance. Her hair remained down, unbound, and uncovered. Symbols from her old life as an unmarried girl were removed. Bands around their arms were replaced by a bridal crown. The crown was typically made of silver with pints ending alternately in crosses and clover leaves set with rock crystal and garland with red and green silk cords, or elaborately woven from straw and wheat, then garland with flowers. The bride and groom would exchange family swords as well as rings as they recited their vows. The most common occupation for a woman in the Viking age was weaving. Viking women would use an upright weighted loom. They would weave household woolen fabrics as well as sails for the Viking ships. It took an estimated two women a better part of a year to weave a sail. Weaving was a large part of a Viking woman's daily life. They would wear cylindrical holders carrying needles and pins that hung from their brooches. Weaving tools are often found in Viking women's graves. They had scissors, combs, needles, and pins. Archaeologists have also found half-bun shaped glass items that they believe were used to smooth out seams. <laughs>